Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel 5149, where I talk business, politics, and society. Today I wanna to talk about eggs and why most of the time, ethical business labels are actually just a sham. Why eggs? Uh, because they crack me up. <laughs> Okay, that's the only egg joke, I promise, and not a comedian over here. Okay, so growing up from time to time, I, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have as well, uh, would come across these images or videos of chickens caged up, living in horrible conditions like this, super close together, can't move, existing for the sole purpose of supplying us with more and more eggs. So when I was doing my regular grocery run a few weeks back, I noticed that all the eggs sold at Trader Joe's were cage-free which I'm like, heck yeah, that's pretty cool. But then I was like, hmm, how could it be possible that you know we have all these cage-free eggs sold in mass for like $2.99 a dozen? Well, here's how. The average space given to a hen housed in a cage is about 67 square inches, about the area covered by a sheet of paper. By comparison, the average space per hen in a cage-free environment is only marginally bigger at one square foot. I mean, I had an inkling this is what was going on behind the scenes, and I'm pretty sure many of you did as well. On packaging, you'll see imagery depicting hens roaming freely outside, maybe next to a red barn or something, seemingly living their best lives, except the reality is that they're crammed into these aviaries that look like this, where they roost in close quarters with rows upon rows of hens stacked high. Sure, maybe there technically is no cage, but the lives of the chickens aren't substantially that different. Um, you know, in fact, maybe worse. According to the Coalition for Sustainable Egg Supply, hen mortality was much higher in the aviary system, the report said. When hens move around more freely, it is easier for them to spread germs, and hens in cage-free aviaries were also more aggressive than their cage-bound peers, pecking at one another, and in some instances, becoming cannibalistic. But of course, cage-free eggs does kind of have a nice ring to it, doesn't it? and big food, you know, they count on you and I not doing any of the research. So many companies, big and small, have actually preemptively jumped on the cage-free bandwagon, including McDonald's. I'm a fourth generation farmer. Every day we strive to make a better farm, a better place for the birds. McDonald's made the decision to go to 100% cage-free eggs in 2015. As a family, we said it's the right thing to do and we need to do it. We are making significant changes in the quality of our food and the ingredients that we use, and that's good for our customers, and that's good for McDonald's. Obviously a very different story and narrative told here compared to reality. I know we're just talking about eggs in this instance, but in general, companies love playing this game of coming up with a slogan or certification that means very little to nothing, just to help them achieve a warm and fuzzy facade. I'll briefly go into another example, which is palm oil. It's used in everything from food products, think cookies and bread, to cosmetics and beauty, lipstick, shampoo, things like that. According to the World Wildlife Foundation, large areas of tropical forests and other ecosystems with high conservation values have been cleared to make room for the vast monoculture oil palm plantations. This clearing has destroyed critical habitat for many endangered species, including rhinos, elephants, and tigers. Burning forest to make room for the crop is also a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. Intensive cultivation methods result in soil pollution and erosion and water contamination. So nowadays, if you look carefully, you'll see a lot of products carry this RSPO certified sustainable palm oil designation on their packaging, implying that their products aren't harming the environment. Unilever, a major consumer packaged goods conglomerate, has made it one of their goals to quote unquote make sustainable palm oil commonplace and are looking to do so by 2023. Now here is the catch. Based on a recent study, three quarters of palm oil concessions in Indonesia and Malaysian Borneo, certified by the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, occupy land that was forest and or wildlife habitat as recently as 30 years ago and that RSBO's failure to account for past deforestation means that every logged area today could be certified as sustainable plantation tomorrow in an infinite loop of meaningless certification. And you might be surprised by this, or, or maybe not surprised, but uh, Unilever is actually one of the founding members of RSPO, the Roundtable of Sustainable Palm Oil. So I'm Unilever, a company whose products harm the environment, but, uh, but we still wanna be perceived as a sustainable company because that's what people want. Oh, I got an idea. Uh, let's just start a nonprofit that will certify our products as sustainable 
And then, you know, of course, we're going to throw a couple dollars their way to make sure that uh, they measure sustainability in a way that would benefit us. Wink, wink. You see, the approach is almost never about fixing the underlying problem. It's, it's about redefining the metric. You know, let's just redefine what a cage is or what constitutes deforestation. Corporations will try as hard as they can and for as long as they can to promote marketing that evokes a certain image, feeling, or emotion instead of making any real fundamental changes to their business. There are obvious financial calculations at play and you know it never hurts to distract from some of the other labor and human rights violations that many of these mega corporations are guilty of, right? We've got them distracted with our supposed excellent environmental record, which you know, the marketing differs a lot from reality. All the while, these other horrific things are going on in the background with labor and human rights violations. And quite honestly, this is something that corporations are just not equipped to address. Uh, their goal is simply to make more and then sell more while complying to the bare minimum of labor and environmental laws set by governments. I know this because that's what we were taught in business school, a la my notes here. So my point is if the government is asleep at the wheel or worse, uh, our politicians are brought up by corporations or if our regulatory agencies aren't enforcing the laws on the books, if we just leave it to the corporations to find what's good and bad on their terms, like with the eggs and palm oil situation like we covered today, nothing can and will ever really change. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I just wanted to talk about this today to bring about more awareness um, to some of the deceptive branding and labeling that's plastered all over our consumer packaging. So um, really curious to hear your thoughts. So please share them in the comment section below. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, um, perhaps other videos on this channel, please support me by liking uh, this video, clicking on that like button, maybe share this with your friends. Um, also, um, you know, think about subscribing if you haven't already done so. As always, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and I will see you next week.